Whenever you discard a non-land card, you may cast it from your graveyard. That is happening immediately. Hi and welcome to a CDH Deck Tech video for Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer, the Demir guy that wins in instant speed. The ability to win in instant speed is absolutely huge because it opens up a completely new game style. Normally, when you're playing something like Demir Kes, you have to follow timing restrictions. So you have to cast your fastest oracle in sorcery speed. And that demands that you have to play a form of control play style because sometimes you have to pass turn. You're not able to win at the moment, so you have to hold up counter spells that you're gonna use at your opponent when they are trying to win on their turn. In pods where everyone is able to win quite fast, but in sorcery speed, it is basically moving around in a circle of who is the threat, so to say. Everyone is holding their cannons at the person whose turn it is. In the days of Flash Hulk, all of that was completely different. Everyone was able to win whenever they wanted to, so it was a stare down match very similar to a Mexican standoff. Oscar is bringing back that exact game plan of Flash Hulk being able to win whenever you want to. Or, well, you need to have your commander in play and a discard effect that can happen in instant speed, but none of that is really hard to achieve. Oscar might be a 5 CMC commander, but it's very easy to make him into a 2 CMC commander. All that you really need is just to have 3 cards or more because of commander tax eventually later on in the game as well, and you're gonna reduce his cost down to black and blue. And you have so many different ways you can discard cards in instant speed. Bazaar of Baghdad might be a little bit expensive, but Ghostly Pilferer spot on of what you want to have here. Ghostly Pilferer literally makes everything inside your hand gaining flash. But we have way more, we can have a really high ratio. Now, Emergence Zone doesn't really discard cards for you, but it's basically doing the exact same thing, enabling instant speed, so pretty good include here because that's the main theme of this deck. It's basically like an additional commander for you if you your commander is being killed. Cephalic Colosseum, great card. It's a land, you can use that to interact with an opponent's fast as Oracle win attempt, or use it to draw and discard in instant speed. Frantic Search, amazing, and Unearth. If your fast as Oracle goes to the graveyard, you can cycle Unearth, basically discarding it, drawing a card, typical cycling, and then just pay one black mana with your commander basically giving it madness. Now we don't need to include like every single discard effect we can get our hands on, but we need to have an efficient ratio because this commander Oscar is also transforming discard into value effects. Normally when you're drawing and discarding cards, you aren't really gaining hand size. You're looting, you're sculpting your hand. But with your commander in play, you're gaining value from the things that you discard as you're casting them as well. Basically turning your commander into a grindy value commander. It's not real card draw, but it's basically card draw production. Now to make all of this go into one beautiful symbiosis, you want to have cards that are close to free to cast. Because you're usually forced to paying mana to draw a card and then discard a card, you rather have those cards that you discard and cast free to cast. Like a Massacre. Discard Massacre in instant speed with that ghostly pilfer or other cool card trick that is drawing and discarding things. And if an opponent controls a plane and you control a swamp, which you're usually going to do, then you don't need to pay mana for Massacre. Great. Also, minus two minus two doesn't kill your commander. But here's another really cool thing. Look at that CMC of Massacre and the CMC of Force of Negation and the first text on Oscar. This spell costs one less to cost for each different mana value among cards in your graveyard. Massacre is 4 and Force of Negation is 3. So this is perfect! But also mundane cards like zero costing artifacts, like Mox Amber, you're usually having your commander effectively in play, so that's always turned on. Mox Opal, we're gonna play a lot of artifacts in this deck, so this is also gonna be easily turned on. And Chrome Mox always pretty much auto included. They are being cast immediately on your first turn, but you could hold on to them for a little while. Sometimes you might be sitting with your frantic search in your hand and you want to cast the frantic search just to dig through your deck, but you don't really have anything you want to cast here this moment, because it's a one-use effect. When you discard it, you have to cast it now. But if you're holding back some of your free-to-cast cards like Mox Opal, because sometimes you're casting Mox Opal 
but you don't really use it immediately, then you could just eventually use your frantic search to get your mox opal into play in instant speed and still gaining the card value. Therefore, I highly recommend both Misha's Bubble and Ursa's Bubble inside this deck to help you first off reduce the costing cost of your commander because they have a CMC of zero. But also, if you discard them, you have your Oscar in play, you can always cast them and they basically sacrifice and draw a card, so they are perfect. We should also auto include Malevolent Hermit because we're discarding so efficiently. We could easily just discard the Hermit to the graveyard and then disturb the Benevolent Geist into play from the graveyard. We could of course just cast the Malevolent Hermit as well. We can also include some awesome flashback cards like Deep Analysis that is actually really bad. Sorcery for mana that is bad, but we don't need to cast it with the commander. Now we could if we have the overflow of mana and we really need to dig through the deck. But if you don't have your access to your commander and you discard deep analysis, you can just cast it for 2 mana and pay 3 life. 2 mana to draw 2 cards is really good. Also, big favorite of mine, Flash of Insight. Flashback, 2 mana, then remove X blue cards from your graveyard and look atop X cards of your library and put one of them into your hand. This is great, you're easily fueling your graveyard with a lot of blue cards here. Now I don't think that Flash of Insight and Deep Analysis are like auto-includes, but they are helping you out here because you're not always going to have access to your commander and they aren't commander dependent. They will function with the discard theme that we're building here without the commander. They will be better with the commander because when you discard these you could cost them as well. But I am showcasing them because it's a very big risk of being too commander dependent. Now as always in the description below of this video you can find a link to my Moxfield decklist Oscar Disco. And you can take a look at all the cards one by one exactly a little bit of how I put this together. Also you can see updates further on in the future. But now I want to talk about something very important. We've mostly looked at card examples of what cards to look for for Oscar, for example, free to cast spells or really low CMC cost spells. So you can always just cast spells for free and a lot of different variations of discard effects. So you can always have access to instant speed from your hand. Now we're going to talk about something really important, the game plan. I did mention Flash Hulk in the beginning of the video and there's a lot of people who don't really know how to actually pilot Flash Hulk. A lot of people back in the days that played this, that picked it up for the first time, played it very similar to how people are playing Fasa's Consult today. Just cast it whenever you have the options to do that. Because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Win as fast as you can. No, absolutely not. Properly played Flash Hulk was very schemy. You would usually sit there with your eyes very dark, silent, and staring at the battlefield, laughing, or well, actually not laughing, but laughing inside, <laughs> hysterically, about your evil plans. Seriously, it was one of the most silent playstyles in the entire game. You would basically sit there and do nothing. Or well, not nothing, you would usually draw cards and such, and like, try to establish more dominance, put lands into play, put more card draw effects into play, put things into play that would increase your power production, so to say. But you never interacted with anything. You literally just sat there and watched three players play the game and just waited for the perfect timing window. The skill in playing Flash Hulk is finding the perfect timing window. So here's a good example of how everything begins. Player 1 is casting an Ad Nauseum and we are player 3, we have our Oscar in play. Player 2 responds with a Force of Will because that's kind of what you should do. And let's say there's a big counter war between player 1, player 2 and player 4. And eventually someone is like winning here of sorts. We, the player 3, we're basically sitting here and doing nothing. Pass, no response, I have nothing. Until... It feels like we've discovered the timing window. What you're doing here, observing this counter war between player 1, 2 and 4, is trying to understand if there's still interaction left. Because with the power of instant speed win, you can win on top of someone else's win. We can even be so bold to wait until 
player 1's fastest oracle is on the stack and player 1 is literally supposed to win. In response, I tap my Bazaar of Baghdad, I discard my fastest oracle, I have a fastest oracle trigger that's gonna happen before your fastest oracle trigger. In response to my fastest oracle trigger, I caused the model consultation and I win before you win. <laughs> Mega master plan achieved. When you're playing against this sort of stuff, it usually feels very weird. But the people behind Flash and Hulk usually have a very devious plan of how they're going to get there. And that's actually very fun. Now you actually have a really big advantage with Oscar because no one really knows how to play against Flash Hulk these days because no one is playing against Flash Hulk these days. Or well some people that did play against Flash Hulk back in the days might know how to deal with Oscar. But there's a lot of people that might misunderstand how to actually play against it. So the basic game plan here is to get your commander into play as fast as you can, then get your combo pieces into hand as fast as you can, and then sit and wait for the perfect timing window. Also, you don't really need to interact with your opponents once you have your win in your hand, because your way of interacting with your opponents is to actually win the game yourself, stealing the win from them. So if we go back to Kess that we compared this commander to in the beginning of the video, Kess has to play a little bit restricted. She has to have some counter spells in her hand when she pass turn so that she is able to interact with people winning on their turn as she can only win in instant speed. We don't actually have to do that. We can cut counters. Okay, you, you don't have to cut counter spells. You can literally have counter spells yourself to be able to interact and protect your win anyway. But you could increase your turbo speed. You could play more tutors to get your com combo into your hand faster. As long as you remember this, your main way of interacting with your opponents is to win instead of your opponents. As long as you remember that, you're gonna be great. That's it for me for this video. Take care guys, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.